like you and I built Canada. Young men like and women like you and I built uh, the United States of America. Sometimes we go back complain something. Oh, racism is too much here. Ah, listen, let me tell you something. There's all there's always. Follow me now. There's always a sense of entitlement when it comes to your property. I mean, let's not go back, you know, into arguing about all oh, the natives came here first. Listen, the United States, as we know it today, you know, was put together by the anglo saxons right? Okay. And we complain. Imagine if you if you took time, you sacrificed blood and sweat to build a house, and someone just comes and like, oh, I want to take the master's bedroom. Come on, what would happen? You get mad. You'd be like, you crazy. That's the bedroom. Did you work for this shit? Get out of here. This is what we see today. I don't condone it, but it's what we see. It's a natural feeling. It's a natural thing. But there's a there's a morale there. There's a lesson there to be learned, which is the fact that we have to build our own. We have to build Nigeria. Nigeria is a blessed country. Nigeria is. A, we gotta be proud again. Sometimes I want to cry when I go to the airport and I see people trying to hide their Nigerian passports. They're just so quick to want to bring their, I'm American. And then you see the Nigerian passport behind. Sometimes we just try to mumble the word, just like, eh, 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 Is it? Is it? Until he died, he didn't know that was what we call it, like, is it? Come with her. Tell your friend to run away through the back gate. Is it? That's what happens in Nigeria. The division is just killing us without any reason. And let me tell you how insignificant and how ineffective tribalism is. Because we only practice this whole this concept of tribalism in Nigeria. You notice that when we come abroad, everything just goes with the wind. Like, who cares about where you're from? When you're new in a place and you need water to drink or you, you're looking for a job or you need a place to stay, you don't ask the people who are you know, giving you a room to, eh, are, are you a Hausa? Are you Yoruba? No. It's, all, it's so insignificant. It's only practiced in Nigeria, this idea of tribalism. And it causes deeper and deeper and deeper disparities and deeper divisions amongst us. You hit the other man not even knowing why you hit them. Our parents tell us a few stories you know, like, ah, yo, Igbo power, Igbo power, Awusa power. I mean, yeah, it's good, but listen, I'm 401 Nigeria. I and mean, we have people here who don't. Because let me tell you, the truth of the matter is we cannot afford the divided Nigeria. It's too late. It's too late. The gates are shut. Maybe 60 years ago, I mean, our elders, they tried. Or probably their, you know, their best wasn't good enough. So the one thing I was going to appeal to them, I wish they were here. I'm just going to look in the camera and say to them is, give us a chance to do it our way. Your ways didn't work. You know, Don't try to infuse that hate, that resentment, and, and you know, we're not used to it. In my search for trying to understand, you know, the power behind, you know, you know, what, whatever is feeling this tribalism, you know, I conducted, a, you know, a little investigation. I'm going to tell you guys a short story. What I did was I had one of my roommates, uh, I equipped him with a recording device, and I called some of my friends. I mean, they didn't know they were, you know, so like uh, uh, subjects of uh, an investigation, but, you know, I, I get I got them to uh, you know like you guys want to hang out and these are people from Ad how many people know Edo State here Edo State and they say, yeah from Edo State uh, my brothers from the east as well as uh, you know the uh, someone from the north who happened to own the restaurant that we go to it's called Suya Spot so for any one of you who go to Toronto just uh, go to Suya Spot and you're there you get the best meat and some nice palm wine. No? Imagine I was some man selling palm wine. <laughs> we talk about tribalism. We are right. So Suya so Spot it is in Toronto. Anyways, so I told him, yo, let's meet up at Suya so Spot, eh? I knew I wasn't gonna go there because I'd already told him, you know, it was a scheme, you know, I knew what I was doing. I told my friend to go there, he was a people with a recording device. So when he got there, he started, ah, you know, Michael, I mean they call me Bobby, but I'm just gonna say Michael here. Yeah. Like, Bobby, man, the guy, every time he's, he's reading all these big, big books, you know, he, he tries to sometimes want to talk like Obama. You know, I don't even understand this guy, man. This guy used to be like, you know, a baller, man. What's this, my friend? I mean, he needed to, you know, to start something. And then, because I knew I could tell the voices, I could, you know, I could hear, like, people, the, the do guy, he was two of them. I could hear them say, you know, that your guy, man. I don't even, this Bobby guy, I don't understand what's wrong with him, man. I hope he hasn't started smoking weed, eh? You know? 
you started ranting, you know, I mean, derogatory statements about me. The same thing, my beloved Igbo brothers were there too. And your voices were the loudest. Ha! <laughs> I'm not that guy. That guy, that was, this guy is a fool, eh? Bobby, what, what does he want to be? People are making chairs and making, this guy said, well, he wants to be a pastor. What is he even doing? And then, guess what? Not too long from their conversation, my friend who happened to be a Hausa guy walks down and says, listen, I could hear all this, I could hear them, you know, talking. So listen, I know you guys are here to spend money at my restaurant, but I'm not going to sit here and hear you guys or listen to you guys talk bad about, you know, he said, shh, shh, but I'm not going to sit here and hear, you know, listen to you guys talk this crap about my friend. I mean, I have so much respect for that guy, you know what I'm saying? And then, I mean, he was now referring to, um, talking to one of the, the Igbo uh, brothers, like, yo, Dave, listen, let me tell you, that, that, you guys claim that you're brothers. He's supposed to be from you know, from the East. Yeah, you look, see how you talk. But listen, guys, I want your money. I need your money, but I'm not going to sit here and have you guys talk crap about my friend. I wasn't there. These guys could have successfully just bad mouthed me and, you know, just crucified me without me even knowing. But look at who stepped in to save the day for me on my behalf. Someone from the North, a Hausa person. We talk about tribalism. There's no tribalism, please. Let's just let's let's get our minds away from this whole tribalism and the, let's now let's start let's start to come together. Because seeing all these things was what compelled me to uh, uh, create my, my my movement, which is uh, one million youth for change in Nigeria under the auspices of Youth for Change, which is a global initiative uh, initiative that is geared towards mobilizing one million youth from across the globe, Nigerians and non-Nigerians, to a meaningful <coughs> march in Nigeria in 2011 immediately after the Nigeria general, uh, general elections to help in strengthening, uh, strengthening the new wave of social political change that's already permeated in the country. Because I don't know about you guys, but I, I could sense that Nigerians are, you know, so like awakened now, you know, we, we're more concerned about the country or, you know, our ethnic groups, you know. Look at us today together. I mean, I don't think we would have had this maybe five or ten years ago. So there's a new wave of social political change that's permeated in the country. This is what this uh, the, 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 one of the purposes of this uh, 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 rally is, to strengthen it, to strengthen it. The focus here is not to go and rain blames or point accusing fingers at the government or at the system. It's about to rather get them to come out en masse, hold hands with the youth, and together we all march into a new and more prosperous Nigeria is what we want to do. I appreciate my brothers who have, you know, conducted, conducted some rallies and protests, you know, saying, shame on you, screw you, screw you. I mean, I'm not that person. I'm, I'm more of a, a peaceful resolution. You got to be pra pragmatic, you know, when, you, when you're trying to resolve a situation. You're not only, because what happened with the two protests that happened, that, 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 that have taken place in Nigeria, nothing has really come out of it because the politicians in Nigeria, they are businessmen. They don't give a shit what you say about them. Talk all you want, man. Blood starts coming out of your mouth. They don't even care. Worst case scenario, they're going to send their thoughts at you, man. And you die for nothing. So, like I said, the focus is not to go rain blames or point at you. It's to rather, because they're like families to us. I mean, there's some of us here who have some sort of affiliation to a politician or a leader in Nigeria. So imagine you telling your family, shame on you, we'll kill you. It's not the way to do it. We want to call them. We want to show the world that, yes, we recognize our imperfections. We know we're not perfect, but we are family. A family that prays together stays together. If we don't show the world that we are a united people, they're going to continue to divide us. Like I said, there are external factors, there are special interests that are interested in Nigeria. They don't want to see us progress. It's a fact. They continue to fail these wars, you know, like, oh, there's an ethnic war in us, <coughs> okay. We think it's an ethnic or it's a religious one. No, let me tell you guys something. It's not it. It's probably someone sitting in Washington or someone sitting in, in uh, Japan or Tokyo sending maybe $500,000 to the people and they'll say, yo, kill themselves. Because the more we fight, the more we have these discrepancies, the more we, you know, you know, bicker, you know, go back and forth, the more we give these people ample amount of years to get their jobs done, to realize their agendas in Nigeria. We shouldn't let that happen. I don't, want my, I don't want my country to be like Somalia. I am tired of the, the countries like Libya, you know, executing our brothers and our sisters for no damn reason. 
and I was sharing this information with Chidi and uh, I think Ubuna uh, yesterday. And I was I was talking about how the Igbo people we are the we are the one of the most traveled people uh, 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 in in Nigeria. We travel a lot, and when we travel, we don't we don't. It's not like it's not on a, a region specific basis. We, there are Igbos everywhere. If there's a country called Dominica or there's a country called uh, Skolich, there's an Igbo man there. So imagine in Libya where these people are not provided with uh, Libyan interpreters and they're getting killed for just mere immigration <coughs> violations. And you know how these people kill. They, you know, they, don't, they don't just hack you like back in the days where your neck falls off and you're dead. They hold you by the neck and then go... <laughs> I mean, imagine Imagine if you, if you got a call and that happens to be you know, someone from, from the family. That's one, of the, that was, that's one of the most painful ways to die. I raised this issue up uh, the first time it happened, and two months later, the Libyan government repeated the same thing. <coughs> the Libyan government. You guys understand or realize how small Libya is? I don't think, Lagos City is even bigger than the whole of Libya. But yet they kill our people indiscriminately without, without any remorse, without answering to our government.